What's, what's, what's the tip? What's the tip? I'm ready for the tip. Don't speak faster. I, I will. No, I, I, I probably like generally speak fast, but yeah, I'll try. I've been working on trying to speak slower. So let's see. Oh, right, guys, today we're going to be talking about how to play six man versus brawl. Um, this is probably, in my opinion, probably one of the harder matchups for six man because most people, when they think of six man, they think you need to play fast and go like really aggressive and whatnot. But it's actually the opposite. When you play six man versus brawl, um, normally you actually want to play more slow, at least in neutral. And we'll talk about it. Um, but before we go into that, uh, I first really want to talk about the different DPS options. Um, we have Tracer, Sombra, Reaper, and Echo, and sort of like what each one sort of brings to offer if you're playing, you know, six man into brawl. So first, uh, we'll talk about Tracer. Um, the first like basic thing to sort of understand about Tracer is that. Pulse is a carry. You 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 hit, you hit pulse bomb. You can get a pick. You can win. More than that, right? Tracer is able to capitalize off triggers. So um, if Tracer like, and we'll talk about triggers in a little bit. If you don't know what a trigger is, but if you force lamp, then Tracer can go in and be really aggressive. So you can like get value out of triggers very fast. You also have. Can I make let me do this? Uh, triggers. Uh, let's go Control Z maybe. Aha! First time using this triggers um and then the other thing is uh like i said pulse bomb value and other than that right it's really good on like longer maps because you can essentially play like slow to fast you don't have to just rush in and like kill something like reaper reaper's burst damage and you have to play fast and you want the enemy being close to you because you want to burst them um or you want to flank but which we'll get into but what i'm getting at is tracer you can play slow and poke 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 poke, poke. you see if some if opportunity someone split something you know out of position no lamp you can then go in double blink complete single blink hopefully and one clip about now sombra is good too um and it's it, for different reasons sombra we're going to use different color here is better so sombra is good because sombra first of all you have emp which is like a win con which is great um more than that uh, you can also get meaningful hacks which allows you to which is a trigger a hack is a trigger which allows your team to push forward um you actually have mid mid ranged like off angle pressure so it's not like short range like reaper and it's not like long range um so you sort of have this mid range which is really good because that allows you to essentially pressure tanks or pressure supports um and off angle allows you to split focus the problem with it though is it lacks burst damage, which means your frontline so could get rolled over. Um, if your Reaper was sort of, it's like a Reaper could play with your Winston sort of at the start, and that would sort of like have your frontline be stronger. Whereas if you're running like Tracer and Sombra, then you sort of have people playing two different angles, like playing split if you're like Winston's over here, because your people are playing split, um, the enemy team can just run into your Winston and sort of try and blow him up. But if you have your Reaper with your Winston now, then it's harder for the enemy Reinhardt to run into him. So. Going further, right? So Sombra, Tracer, we talked about EMP here, talked about hack value, talked about sort of the mid-range value. Again, slow to fast, don't need to rush it. Reaper is really good on enclosed maps because you're gonna be able to burst things down because um, they're close to you. If it's a long range map, it'll take forever for Reaper to rotate, so it's not good. Um, as well as Reaper is also really good at flanking and splitting focus. So Reaper could teleport behind and then like go on a BAP and the BAP might be instantly for forced lamp. And then Reaper can just like, uh, wraith away and then the team can push it and then me bap has no lamp um something also to realize about all these things is they all have livable cds so i call them tracer has recall and blink somber has a translocate reaper has wraith uh, echo has fly now echo i'm just gonna like not gonna go too much into it i don't think it's very good into brawl especially if they have a hit scan if they don't hit scan fine it might be worth it but the problem with echo is that because of your positioning to get or the problem with echo essentially is this for you to get value, you need to off angle and actually get hero damage. And for you to off angle, that means that you're sort of by yourself. And because you normally run Lucio Moira with six man, you're not really going to get any heals, very minimal heals. So when you like start playing really split like that, any bit of poke you take as Echo is really harmful. Um, as well as I think that you know Tracer Sombra are a bit more versatile and, and mobile, so allow you to get like play faster when you need to. Uh, so now we're going to move into sort of like the you know the neutral and talk about the win cons down here so the main win cons and i'm going to give you an actual scrim example but the main win cons essentially is two things either you play fast or burst something if you see an opportunity uh maybe when you have point control or um you know you sort of play slow and you look for play for angles you look for triggers and then you push based off that so before i go further i want to explain what triggers are 
actually. So triggers are sort of like opportunities where you can like something happens and then you can maybe push off that. So examples of triggers uh, is maybe like an out of position target. So, or like a low target. So low target, out of position, out of position, uh, maybe a hack target. Um, maybe you have, maybe you have an ultimate or that you have an alt advantage. Uh, maybe you forced an important CD like lamp, you forced important CD. So based off these triggers, you can then push in and go, right? So here, maybe you want to play really fast and try and like blow someone up, blow up, or maybe you want to play sort of like, it's called, it's like ebb and flow. If you don't know what ebb and flow is, you can watch the ebb and flow video. You play ebb and flow and you sort of play for these triggers and you're sort of positioned for flanks and off angles. So I'm going to first give you like an actual example from a scrim as why this is sort of important. Um, and we'll sort of go from here. So here we can sort of see that we have blue team playing a brawl, red team playing six man. So when we sort of start this fight here, we'll notice that also something else I forgot to mention, Sombra Reaper, right? Pretty good enclosed map. So Reaper makes sense. Sombra, in, in my opinion, inherently is good. So my, my always picks are always going to be Sombra Reaper, Sombra Tracer uh, into Brawl. Uh, if you're playing Mirror Six Man, then maybe you could go with the, you know, uh, Echo, but I don't think it's that great. So the biggest problem here, first of all, is that we see a lot of people stacked together. We see the Reaper here. We see the Winston, Diva, Lucio, Moira. Now, to get value into a Reinhardt, and into just a general brawl, you have to realize that you're not going to win this front fight. Like this fight over here is 100% going to go in favor of the Reinhardt. So there's no point putting your Reaper here. Like sure, your Reaper can play there if you want, but the enemy diva is just going to DM you. So having your Reaper maybe try and teleport behind to try and flank and force like lamp really early, um, we would be really good. As well as it also splits focus and maybe has the enemy team turn around and we'll use one. The enemy team turn around and if the enemy team pushes forward, right, and your Reaper teleports behind, then the enemy team turns around, then the enemy team ends up splitting. So, like, that'll be bad. Maybe three people turn, three people go forward, and that can work really well in your favor. But before we go into here, right, if we notice here, Winston goes forward, and he uses bubble really early. Bubble is how you hold space. So you should never be using bubble instantly. You should be using it, like, as late as possible. You should be using DM first, then bubble. Uh, next thing too as well is so you understand the enemy team really shouldn't do that much damage to like the, your core who's up here which again should be these guys why because moira's range for heals is 15 meters lucio i think it's it's like 15 meters i can't remember uh, on top of my head but it's pretty far uh winston is eight meters um diva is 10 to 20 so and Ryan's cleave is five meters. Hence, what I'm getting at is you should be able to, you know, like not actually take Ryan damage. There's no reason for you to go this close when the Ryan swings on you, you take swing damage. Same thing for this Diva, right? This Diva is like literally walking in. They're both walking in. This is pointless. Obviously, now, you know, wall happens. You save jump. That's great. It's really good here that, you know, the enemy team used wall. The Winston saved jumps. He's able to jump out. Now, right, because the enemy team used wall, the enemy team still has amp. So the enemy team could amp in. When that happens, it's really important that this Lucio saves amp speed so they can amp speed out. Okay. Um, if the enemy team doesn't get a good wall, then when the enemy team amp speeds in, then your Winston, can, your Winston, your Diva, your Lucio Moira can just use their livable CDs or like fade, um, cast passive C speed, Diva fly or Diva jets, Winston jump and sort of just kite. And why this is good is because if the enemy team pushes in with amp and you sort of just use your like livable CDs to kite, then later you still have your amp. So later, if you want, you can push back in with your amp or you can kite more, which gives you an advantage. So we'll keep watching this and we'll keep talking about what went wrong. So notice how aggressive the Winston is. Notice how the enemy diva isn't really on the Reaper. And notice how the Sombra is behind. Lamp gets forced, right? And I can already tell you going in from the start of this that the Winston are just probably just not going to work because of how they're trying to fight on this high ground. You're, they're fighting in a spot which in, is sort of an enclosed area, which gives Ryan a lot of value. You really want to force the enemy team into an open space where there's a lot of angles so that your DPS can get value. So how are you going to do that in this in this map? And it's a little tricky, but it's a lot easier than like, sorry, it's it, it's a little tricky, but um, and on maps like uh, Legion Gardens, it's actually a lot easier, but it's still doable here. So how are you going to do it? Let's go back and we'll go here. Uh, it's fine, actually. 
So the whole point is to not actually have the fight over here. The whole point is to actually have the fight right over here in this area. And how what's going to happen is your Winston is just going to start over here, your Divas here, your Lucio's here, and your Moira's here. Now the enemy team will push, and then when the enemy team pushes, your team is going to drop and kite over here. Your team is going to drop over here, and what will happen is your Sombra will just be chilling like somewhere over here. So when the enemy team drops to follow, maybe the Reinhardt or something, then because they're following the Winston, the Sombra will then look for a hack, and then a Reaper who's also maybe maybe up here on top or maybe below here, then will look to also pinch. So now you have like multiple angles coming in, and then the Reaper and then the Winston can come back in too. So it's sort of this ebb and flow aspect where a number one, like the, this fight's happening. Let's use white actually, so it's cleaner. So one, this fight's happening. Then two, this person kites. Three, this person sort of follows. And then one, after that person follows, you have the Sombra hack and the Reaper pinch come in. So you're baiting the enemy team into what's called, a, you're baiting the enemy team to a rotation. And this works because you're forcing point. I'll give you another example of this concept for retake. So, right over here. Oh, let's see. I think this fight over here. So this fight right over here. The enemy team is looking to retake. Unfortunately, they don't have any ultimates. So how are you going to approach this? Well, these guys are on high ground and they're not on point. So, and it's a mistake, their diva should actually be on point. But um, what you're gonna do here is you're actually gonna have your diva drop to point here. And then when their diva drops, your Sombra now, again, is gonna like hide over here. And your Sombra is gonna hack their diva and then your team will just push the diva. And you're gonna get a pick off that. And your Reaper again can play some other position. While this whole thing happens, maybe your Reaper teleports high ground and looks to like pinch. He, he doesn't necessarily, again, need to play with the team. He can do his own thing. Um, and that's the power of Reaper because he has Wraith <laughs> and he can also burst. If he's playing with your Winston, it's not very valuable because he can just get DM'd. Um, also, when you have so many different angles of aggression happening, like, you know, Sombra, Reaper, and then Diva, and then the Winston, like you have this many things, it's really hard for the enemy Diva to keep track of all these angles. So it'll be hard for the Diva in general to like mark the Reaper. So this is the same strat that you can do. Um, something else, but going back before I go into retakes, going back into the neutral fight, right? So we sort of talked about how, you know, you sort of play this ebb and flow, you play for triggers, you play slow, you bait them. We talked about the, ex the example of forcing a rotation where you sort of want to force point. However, this isn't always the case. Sometimes you can't force point. Sometimes maybe, you know, you're, you're just not able to. So let's say, you know, the fight's happening oops, on high ground here. Or better yet, let me get a better example, actually. It'll take me a second, though. A few moments later. Hopefully this is something everyone can relate to. Uh, so maybe the enemy team on Lee Jane Gardens just tellies to point. So they tell you to point with Simbrawl here. And I'm just going to say Brawl, they're on point. And you're playing six man and you're over here. So your Winston's over here. Now, when this happens, right, you want to bait your Winston. So the enemy team looks to sort of run into your Winston. So they look to push in. But when that happens again, maybe you have your Reaper behind. Maybe you have your Sombra on an off angle. And then your Winston sort of uses passive speed and just kites back. So your Winston will kite back. And then maybe if needed, he can jump. Maybe he jumps back over here now. And while this is happening, right, it's not just your your Winston that's kiting. It's the Diva, your Lucio, and your Moira. And then as, you know, this sort of kite happens, your Sombra, your Sombra gets value. Your Reaper gets value. And eventually again, same concept. The enemy team is forced to turn, right, for these people. And when that turn happens, then your team will actually look eventually to push back in. So this is again forcing a rotation, but here in this situation, you're forcing a rotation on Winston. So we force point is one, but then now the next one is bait Winston. Okay, so now we talk about forcing rotations. Um, we talked about angles and split focus, that just happened naturally. Uh, positioning, we've sort of talked about as well, where we want sort of the DPS always playing different angles. We want the Winston playing sort of like the main ink part. Diva's close to Winston, but not necessarily stacked on the Winston. And then your Lucio, Moira are around there. Moira's job is to keep Winston alive. Okay, so this is all done. Now we'll move on to 
retakes. And we already sort of like briefly talked about it, um, but we're going to go back and look at this retake. So I gave you a retake example where essentially you can force point and approach it that way. But I want to give you another example of how you can approach retakes too. And so here, in this retake right over here, they don't have ultimates yet. And obviously if you have an alt, wait, whoops, obviously retakes. if you have an alt for retake, that's just going to make your life easy. So if you see here, they're close to primal. Well, if they have primal, they can primal the enemy team off, displace them. Like imagine the primal happens here. Maybe the reaper's over here or he like telly's like under, uh, sorry, let's do this. So imagine like the Winston comes from here. The rest of the team comes here. Reaper plays over here. The Winston jumps up, primals, dislodges. Reaper comes here. Rest of the team pushes here. Again, pinch, multiple angles, hard for D.Va to deal with. Get a lot of value. Probably, for primal, honestly, probably just forces lamp. Then D.Va can rocket it, and you can just get insane value. Um, and that could work. But the problem you need to understand is that not all this time, not, not, like if you're playing versus a good team, sure, you might be, sorry, if you play versus a good team, they won't just die instantly. It'll turn into an ebb and flow fight. And what I mean by that is like, let's say you win an alt, then maybe they'll, uh, you know, high noon peel and like their McCree's hiding somewhere. Or maybe you push with Cole, maybe, maybe they beat. So what I'm getting at is, you know, it'll turn into a thing where you, they use an alt or you use an ultimate, then they'll use an ultimate, then you use an ultimate and go back and forth. So it's really important that when you look to retake, right? Like don't just assume sometimes that you're gonna win with one ultimate if the enemy team has alts. So be ready for a back and forth fight. And I wanna give you an example of that. Um, that happened, I believe here. So here, this is a perfect example. The enemy team jumps in with Winston. You can see the Sombra is, you know, on an off angle, fine. Again, I would have liked that they forced point, but it's okay. I would have liked if Reaper was also set up closer fine but it happens the primal happens here it's huge displacement they use coal plus the primal so not really the best now imagine if this primal's job was to knock them low ground sombra was already set up on low ground reaper was also set up too and they're like the rest of the back line was here to help the winston and then they just look to push a target right that you would kill that you would just kill someone they would just die instantly um so now the coal happens right but now the enemy team's like you you, you sort of threw two punches you threw the punch with uh, primal and threw the punch with coal the enemy team's like no I, i'm not over and then they punch back with a um with a high noon and you guys aren't like the red team isn't ready for that and the winston overextends and dies and as you see here the somber got a good hack on diva which is great but <laughs> then they like red team's like we can keep going we'll use reaper alt but they weren't expecting beat. Blue team uses beat, and now this fight's looking not as close as it was at the start. Diva bomb happens, like Lamp wasn't forced to late. Huge diva bomb, but they didn't really actually pressure or kill their tanks, so the enemy team was able to hold space. So keep in mind when you're retaking, this sort of ebb and flow is going to happen. Um, something else to keep in mind, right, is in general when you're playing versus six uh, brawl, the, if you don't pressure the Reinhardt, you're going to run into an issue because the Ryan will just hold space and that'll be a problem because the Kree will just pop off. But that doesn't mean everyone can pressure the Reinhardt because if everyone pressures, whoops, if everyone pressures the Reinhardt, then the BAP's going to be no, not pressured. So what I'm getting at is try and have some split focus. If you're running something like this, maybe have your, you know, Reaper go on the BAP one fight. Maybe have your Sombra go on the BAP one fight. If you're playing Tracer Sombra, I prefer the Tracer go on the uh, BAP and then Sombra pressure, soft pressure tanks, right? If your Sombra's playing for a hack play, then have a Reaper go on the BAP, right? So make sure somebody's pressuring the BAP just to split focus so that, you know, the the BAP's forced to turn, not heal Ryan, and then the rest of the team is pressuring Reinhardt, which is normally your Winston, your D.Va, from an off angle, your Moira shouldn't be shooting Ryan shield, preferably shooting somebody. Your Lucio, again, not shooting Ryan shield, preferably shooting somebody, like, you know, maybe DPS, shooting the BAP force lamp, D.Va's mech's good. Same thing with Moira, pre pre pressuring D.Va, uh, pressuring DPS. But trying to actually split their heals off so the BAP can't heal the Reinhardt, then you can pressure the tanks, tanks get low, very easy to walk forward. Because if Reinhardt's low HP, he can't swing, which then allows your Winston to walk up and do more damage. Last thing I wanted to talk about, whoops, where'd it go? Here. Uh, so now we sort of talked about, talked a little bit about, you know, point control or retaking. Now the last thing I want to talk about is point control. So I'm not going to go too much into this, but I'm going to keep it very simple. If you have point control, um, there's two ways to think about it, right? Is do you want to play first or do you want to play second? And if you want to play first, you can just engage with ultimates, right? And go really hard, but 
the question is do they have ultimates are they going to be able to live so sometimes if you want to go first maybe do some soft pressure while they're rotating to force lamp or force cds so if the enemy team is maybe looking to like rotate like this maybe you you know you have some soft pressure like some someone over here like a tracer sombra like you know pressuring and maybe this summer is behind and you sort of pressure maybe force lamp really early and then when the enemy team like rotates over here right when they're maybe in like an open space like this then then you know you collapse on them when you come from multiple angles so try and maybe do some pressure first then go really hard also keep in mind when the enemy team is retaking space they normally have to use ultimates to take space so and that sort of leads in to playing second so what I'm getting at with this is if you know the enemy team is going to push with window or push with beat, why are you going to, you know, just run in with coal or something? If you know they're going to like push with beat, if we're going to push with high noon, they're going to push with window, then instead just play second and play passive tempo. And if you don't know what passive tempo is, you should watch the six man play style video. But, um, you know, you sort of play close, you make it look like you're going first, enemy team pushes in, then you kite back, they keep going, then, you know, you split focus again, the Reaper goes behind, Sombra goes behind, or Tracer goes behind, then they, you know, they're forced to turn around, some people keep going, then you push back in. And that's sort of the concept of, you know, playing slow or passive tempo. Hopefully this helped a lot. Um, it's it's again it's a very different play style not not a lot of people think about properly where it's like oh we need to play fast right because we're six man but it's you actually really need to play slow and you need to be able to you know kite their engage and bait your winston bait them into open space and rotations and get value out of your dps from angles i hope you enjoyed um and i hope you learned a lot thank you